Hello folks, Alex Zonin here. Uh, today we're going to talk about troubleshooting the issues with the uh, Y-axis uh, limit switch on uh, Tormach 1100 Series 3 mil. Uh, the most common problem that people experience with is that um, you ride the machine into it, everything gets stuck and there's a quick fix. Um, uh, Dan Rogge has a video about it, but just to cover it really quick in this video, you go to the settings screen, you uncheck the limit switches box, it gives you a warning, you agree, uh, send your life away. So that disables the effect of limit switches on the machine, allowing you to jog uh, any which way you want. You gotta be careful if you hit the limit of the table, obviously the, the stepper motor is gonna start skipping step. Then you simply switch to the status screen and you jog off um, the limit switch go back to the settings, re-enable the limit switch checkbox, and you're done. So that's the issue number one that's very common. Issue number two um, that occurs uh, periodically is that coolant gets into the, this portion of the switch right here. There's so much coolant that dry, dries up in there that it gets stuck in this position and doesn't, um, um, doesn't open up. When the, the table rides off of it, it doesn't really go back to its retracted mode or extended mode, um, effectively making the machine think that, that it's still engaged until it basically later on clicks off. So quick fix for it is uh, get a little WD-40, uh, spray it um, around the roller area and just kind of give it a little massage and work it through until it um, liberates itself and uh, Bob's your uncle, you're, you're good to go. So today we're also going to talk about uh, the third type of problem that, that finally occurred to me. I, I heard it occurring to other people, but um, first time here. When you um, reference your axes, uh, the machine would go to reference the Y axes. The switch would write uh, into its bump, get engaged, and the table keeps going and going and going. So uh, in other words, the machine was not detecting uh, the change in the switch's position. That led me to believe that the switch may be faulty. I started troubleshooting. Uh, I put the on meter on, on, on the screws, um, on the contact, and I was detecting uh, the actual change um, in you know, resistance as it goes through. So um, I thought, hmm, well, it looks like the switch is working. So I took the wires off, uh, and that, with the help of a few people, um, in the Tormach support group um, allowed me to see clearly that when you go to the status page and you look at the uh, uh, little uh, virtual LEDs for each axis um, that it was working if you if you touch the wires directly bypassing the switch uh, and the switch was not really uh, affecting the machine so despite the fact that the readings on the ohm meter uh, looked okay. So then I took the switch off, uh, you know, by common suggestion I blew a lot of air through it, got rid of what seems to be like all the coolant, uh, and uh, put it back on. It wasn't helping at all. So um, a lot of people said just get rid of the switch, get a new one. But here we are in the corona lockdown. Um, it's going to be a while before the new switch gets to me. So I thought, okay, let's open this baby up and uh, see what we can do. If there's a way to fix it, um, at least temporarily uh, to get the machine working until the new replacement switch gets here. So um, the tools you're going to need uh, are very simple. You can, you can use um, any drill um, or a spotting drill, this is carbide right here, and, uh, or a countersink. Basically anything that you can use manually uh, to, um, to get rid of the rivets. So let's put this baby in the vise and I'll show you what I mean. So here we go, we have the limit switch uh, mounted into, uh, uh, into the vise. Uh, very gently, you don't wanna break the casing. And we're gonna be taking out uh, these four rivets right here. Um, since I've already done this, I, I already have them uh, shared off. I flipped the switch to the other side just to kinda show you how that looks like. Um, all four of them uh, look like this. Um, and these are the opposite sides that uh, I didn't touch. So take a countersink or any kind of tool that would allow you to um, be rotated in 
clockwise fashion, effectively getting rid of uh, the skirt of those four rivets. I believe they're made of aluminum, so you don't really need uh, a lot of effort. So after you're done with that, um, after you shear off the edges off of all four uh, rivets, this is how they're gonna look like. So uh, simply put your hand underneath and you will need a couple of punches. I'm using a two millimeter and a five millimeter. If you don't have them, you can use Allen keys, uh, a nail, whatever. Uh, and just basically go through and uh, get the pins out. Uh, same with these guys. After you remove the, uh, the rivets, basically you can uh, lift this metal skirt um, off of the switch casing. And uh, interestingly, you will see that it's supposed to be sealed. Um, it's really a you know, rubber gasket and all that jazz and uh, the coolant still gets inside. So we're gonna take this part and put it on the side, flip it upside down and uh, carefully wiggle and slide uh, the, the heart of the switch um, out of its casing. Again, you see that we have a, what appears to be a rubber gasket around the perimeter of the casing. Um, the button is also supposed to be um, sealed. And uh, here's our switch. So, uh, like I said, I've already done this before. When I popped that open, the entire inside of it was full of coolant. So there's effectively really no way for you to uh, blow that coolant out or dry that out because uh, of the gaskets, you're probably just gonna damage them. So uh, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna drop this uh, portion into an ultrasonic bath um, for, I don't know, three to five minutes, uh, give it a rinse, make sure that all the coolant and all the grease uh, is out and that uh, it makes uh, good contact. If you don't have um, an ultrasonic bath, uh, all you really need is a piece of emery cloth or uh, fine grit uh, sandpaper. Um, you can uh, put that face up uh, through the contact, engage the switch, and gently drag that out. Uh, then do the same thing, uh, pointing the working surface of the uh, emery cloth or uh, sandpaper downwards. Again, engage the switch, gently drag that out, and that's gonna clean the contacts. Um, you can also uh, do that to uh, uh, the contacts being in the other position, uh, doing open and close. You should cover, cover all uh, states, so all sides of the contacts are cleaned out. So after you're done cleaning your internals of the switch um, in an ultrasonic bath or emery cloth or uh, sandpaper um, or combination of, uh, you can put it back together, make sure that the button side uh, of the casing aligns with the side where the spring is. Uh, Maybe put some uh, water-based lubricant around the O-ring and uh, slide the, the switch back into its casing, making sure that uh, the contact click. Then put the top portion of it, making sure that the, uh, this plastic cover right here uh, aligns with the rubber gasket. And switch that back on. Again, make sure that the switch is working. Then uh, I'm just gonna gently put it on the vise. And we're gonna use uh, a couple of uh, stainless 440 screws uh, Alan had with the, for the smaller rivet holes. They go right in. And then a couple of 1024s, I believe this is uh, one inch or uh, one and a quarter. Uh, those go right in. And I'm going to use uh, uh, lock nuts. Okay. Uh, once you're done, just make sure that uh, you didn't crack the casing and the the you know definitely don't over tighten those uh, those bolts and nuts. Now that we've put the switch back together, uh, we're just going to make sure that it works. Um, I'm in the uh, on meter at the fairly low setting. Um, since it's in a normally closed position, you want to use the two exterior uh, bolts and not the one in the middle. And you can see that uh, we do have 
have a working switch back again. So now that we have the switch mounted back in, um, put the wires back onto the external contacts. Um, let's check if it works. I'm going to just uh, So one thing I gotta say, um, I went through the effort a while ago of uh, welding this box through and through because it had cracks just the way it naturally came. And then I powder coated it, uh, thinking that that would seal it. Um, and I put some silicon um, into the joints and, and all that jazz. However, when I opened the box, it was half full of coolant. And like I said, the coolant was, uh, you know, it flooded the switch completely. So when I opened the switch, it was full of coolant. So uh, my take is, and it was actually suggested by uh, a support person from Tormac, is to drill a couple of holes in this surface, which is the bottom of the switch box, because normally it's oriented that way, just so that the coolant drains out. Uh, I don't think there's effectively a good way to prevent that from getting in, just because um, even if you seal the box completely, it will get through um, this this pin right here um, and somehow will find its way into the switch. Now that we've completed the cleanup of that um, y-axis uh, switch, let's see if we can re-reference the, the axis. Just go to uh, that button and say, yeah, it's already referenced, but re-reference it again and uh, I'm gonna hit OK. And it works like a charm. So you can see I have the um, table cover that I made out of a quarter inch plate um, of aluminum um, to, to help the coolant you know not, not puddle in the on the table itself um, and it, it has an overhang uh, but even with that it doesn't really protect uh, that switch uh, enough um, so the coolant does get in no matter what so my take on this is that you have to uh, periodically open that box, check what's going on, you know, uh, and perform the procedure that you've just seen me do, or simply replace the switch, which, uh, which is a better option anyway. And a couple of afterthoughts. Um, for those of you who are wondering if you can reuse the rivets, um, you actually can. Um, the length, uh, the inside length of uh, this rivet is uh, 750 thousandths, or uh, three quarters of an inch. This one is uh, 725 thousandths uh, uh, of an inch. Uh, so sure, you shear it off one side, but the thing is, the way the switch is positioned, you can do it in a way where when you plug them back in, they are facing upwards um, with the untouched sides. So basically um, hanging like this, and they're not coming up. Um, sure, the integrity of, of the switch is, uh, you know, not, not where it used to be once and, uh, um, you know, due to the vibration and stuff like that, maybe the, the accuracy is not there. But again, all of this is just a temporary solution until you get your replacement switch um, on order to arrive. That's all, folks. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or, uh, or suggestions. Hopefully this helps somebody to troubleshoot their uh, uh, y-axis switch problem.